Hello Rutbags, it's Jay Plays Games. Welcome to a mini access show. Today we're going to be talking about Day Z and Scum. Both launched this week on different platforms, Scum obviously on PC and Day Z finally on console for the first time on the Xbox One. Both have had some serious issues and problems, but both are incredibly popular at the moment. So we're going to be discussing that and talking about it. I'm going to be giving you a lowdown on the lows and the highs of both of them launches and why they're extremely similar and why some people really are saying that Scum is going to be the brand new DayZ, but in a good way. So come with me, it's the Access Show, let's go. So starting off with DayZ, absolutely blowing things apart on my YouTube channel. I am hitting views and figures I haven't hit in a good few months. DayZ is incredibly popular on Xbox One. That said, there are a bunch of problems and issues and you're never going to get away from people that really just don't like the game and the way the devs have handled it during development. My comments section are easily 50% people saying they're enjoying the game, 50% people just saying the game is trash. And I'll never hide that I hype up this game because I am enjoying it, despite the flaws, despite the problems, and despite some misgivings which I'm going to go through now with you, I am still really enjoying the game. DayZ has had some updates already, there's been frequent ones since it launched, but today there was a server side update that hopefully corrects and fixes a lot of the major issues people are having in joining the game. The servers should now be able to be sorted by the amount of players playing on the server and server names and the fixes in the server browser window should have been fixed. Also problems with inventory, people were complaining that slots were being incorrectly reported as well as micromanagement in players inventory just being well off. That update came around 7 hours ago so it should be working a lot better than it was. It is an early access title on Xbox and it's only just started life on Xbox. There is going to be substantial problems and issues and I think that's where a lot of the problems lie. A lot of the people commenting are just trash talkers, literally haven't picked up Daisy in their lives but they've jumped on the bandwagon from other people who legitimately can criticise the game because they've played it a lot on PC. No doubt about it, the game on Xbox is a very much stripped down version of any DayZ you've seen in previous years. The version that we're playing right now is exactly the same as the PC version, but lots of features have been taken out while they're working on the beta. There are no vehicles in the game currency. There are no currently plans to add things like growing your own plants or fishing just yet. But you can do lots of the components and make lots of the components that will allow you to do them features, you just can't actually do the final product. You will find car batteries around the map and you can make things like rope and dig up worms which would normally mean you can go fishing. Proximity chat is still buggy as well while you're in a party with other people, it is meant to work, you're not meant to have to jump out of party, you should be able to have proximity chat while you're in a party. Hopefully that's going to be fixed or it has been fixed in the latest update. But overall, overall, I am quite impressed with the way the game is running. I haven't had the amount of problems people have, and you can see how much from the live streams, the hours I've put into the game, there have been some issues logging in occasionally, trying to find a server that's suitable, but frequently I just scroll all the way down and pick a server right at the bottom. I do think the game is overpriced, and I've stated that many times. I think for £31, $40 for an early access game with very stripped back features, it really maybe isn't worth it just yet. You would really have to love DayZ and survival games if you was picking this up right now. If you've never played a DayZ game or really heard much about it, or you're not a big fan of survival, definitely don't touch this for a while longer. That may seem a bit mad since I'm pushing it hard and I'm doing so many videos, but I am enjoying it, bugs and all. I personally would spend $40 on it, but I can really see why people have got a problem when the game just doesn't have that many features or it's quite buggy and it's not in a good state. But for me, as long as you can connect to the game, I can deal with lots of other bugs and glitches and problems with inventory. It's just connecting that I will have a major problem with, and they've kind of fixed that hopefully by now. So. Daisy is not one for the squeamish, it's not for people that really get upset over bugs and issues and if you're expecting Daisy of years gone by, maybe readjust and take a look at other streamers streaming it right now to, before you jump in. But for me, that thrill, that idea of looting for ages and then finally coming across something bloody useful and then coming across a player absolutely makes up for all the problems, the issues and the expense of the game. And if I get any more people saying the game is trash from just playing it on PC or have never seen it even, just go away. No one cares. Jump into the free trial yourself. Remember, you can play DayZ for an hour on Xbox One, then come back and tell me some constructive criticism about the game. No one likes to try our troll. 
And speaking of trollish behaviour, Scum has launched this week on Steam and it is absolutely blowing up. Loads of your favourite tubers have jumped on the bandwagon, some really big ones as well, people like Shroud, not to mention all the Ark and Survival Ark tubers that I know and usually kind of compete with a lot with Ark stuff. They're all jumping on it, people really enjoying it. Scum is extremely, extremely influenced by DayZ. I finally got a chance to play it last night. I got a good three hour session in with Fatty McButterpants, a good friend of mine, and we're going to be seeing some content over the weekend and in the next week or so. Scum is extremely like Daisy in terms of how you, you know, go around the island scrounging up loot, that core mechanic of desperately trying to find food and water and find some sort of weapon and then being able to craft and make items. Oh my gosh, it really felt like I was playing an upgraded brand new version of Daisy. Of course, Scum's got much more to it than that. They've got the events that they're enabling where you can just jump into an event mid-game. You've also got their different ways they're describing stuff. But really, deep down at its core, it is a survival loot and shoot game. You never know if someone's going to be friendly or not. That said, I come across absolutely no one last night in a three hour session on a pretty full server. So whether or not the map's that huge. I also found the map was pretty barren so far. It just didn't really have that much going for it. Now with DayZ you kind of expect that considering it's set in a post-apocalyptic world but in Scum I kind of had the idea that you know it's more modern times even though the prisoners set on an island I really wanted to see a little bit more variety in the landscape and the environmentals. Don't get me wrong the game looks pretty decent and I was quite impressed with some of the foliage and some of the you know the environmental effects but it just did feel just a little bit plain. Of course the big thing that scum is going for is this idea it's a real hardcore simulation game and surviving is absolutely important because you have to really take care of your health you've got things like your pulse meter you can check your heart rate you can check your lung capacity there's all sorts of crazy stuff going on with this game where you can check your body vital signs your body stats and as you perform and do things in the game it's meant to increase it's meant to make you better you can get fitter you can get fatter it just depends on what lifestyle you're living some of these features are really cool i really like the idea that as you progress in the game and as you're doing certain actions you're going to get fitter or it really affects how you are as a person your body shape and your abilities whether or not you're large it means you're going to be stronger or whether or not you're more skinny it means you're going to be able to run quicker I'm still not convinced by the amount of detail it's gone into with the stuff like the heart rate, the body rate, the body mass index stuff. I don't really know how much of that is useful for what is meant to be just a survival game. I will be giving a breakdown detailed of exactly what I think in a separate impressions video and I'll be showing you guys some more gameplay. So make sure you tune in for notifications of when I'm going to be live streaming or playing Scum. Now I did mention trollish behaviour, that's because there have been some problems obviously. Scum is not immune to the early access curse. When they launched, the demand for servers and people playing the game far outstripped what they had capable. They sold over 250,000 copies of the game in less than 24 hours. So that is extremely popular. That is really putting it up there with some of the top 10 launches of games on Steam in that genre. In fact, there's plenty of AAA games that would love to get 250,000 sales on Steam. So well done to the developers of Scum. That is fantastic score. They're busy ahead fixing the problems and issues they've got going on with the servers as well. There are connection problems, and that was the biggest problem, just like it was for DayZ. Whether or not, I don't know if it's down to them not ordering enough servers, or they're just something goes wrong when they connect it to certain services. But there just seems to be a theme that happens with pretty much every early access game, and maybe not even every early access. I can't remember the amount of times I've looked at how Destiny launched and DLCs, and they still had loads of problems with servers. That said, the hard work by developers in understandably trying to get the game stable and dealing with the huge influx of people interested in the game hasn't been very kind for Steam reviews. Already nearly 5,000 reviews and they are mixed. People were praising the game's ability to have so many different facets, so many unique different biomes, the fact that you can get different types of loot and the way it affects your body, as well as the added incentive of having things like mechs in it and these puppets, which are really just zombies, but we'll call them puppets for now. People are really loving that side of it. They're really loving the humour. They're really loving the gross things that you can take an absolute dump anywhere you like. You can get diarrhoea. You can piss on other players. Small quirky things are really good for this game and it's definitely set in, in line with what the game is set in, a prison island. 
But likewise, problems are having with people glitching out with zombies or puppets, maybe falling through the map, occasioning problems with firearm shooting, and of course, connectivity is the main one. It's very interesting. Lots of people have been commenting saying Scum's better than DayZ. You should be playing Scum. Don't touch DayZ. And it's just interesting to see how each game starts on different consoles and the history of them. Scum is relatively new. It's got all the chance to look at all the problems, all the issues that other developers have faced. And so it seems to have took that on board and really is focusing and making sure their game is as good as it can be, even with the teething problems it's had. And for many of you with real legitimate criticism of the game because you've played it on Xbox, Daisy just isn't maybe doing it for you. You're pretty pissed off the fact it's just not running well enough and the lack of content that should be there, maybe from years gone by or even months gone by, just isn't in this current build. Either way, it's an exciting time for survival games. I'm going to be doing a video talking about the rise of survival and why survival is back in business. I'm enjoying both of the games. I'm definitely going to be playing both of them and live streaming both of them. So make sure you've got notifications turned on. One side note, a problem that happened with Scum. Discord moderators were having a little bit of fun with people asking for keys in their Discord and they were giving people fake keys or missing out letters. This led to some major trolling because then players then got banned from their Steam accounts for trying too many times to access a game with the wrong keys. It's good to see that the people that are helping out with the game, the community, are just as scummy as the prisoners in the game. Now that's pretty light-hearted really when you take into account what next has happened. Scum developers have had to remove a tattoo from the game because it depicts a Nazi symbol, I kid you not. Now we've had Nazi symbols brought up in the past in the Wolfenstein games. Is it right to include such historical stuff like that when the game is clearly fictional? But it's it's a bit of an odd one really with this so they have removed it it did provoke a massive outcry and scum developers supposedly have removed the tattoo that does have a nazi symbol in it it really does seem like scum is going all out there to be provocative and make a name for itself and maybe not just be passed off as some other game getting lots of good positive and negative reception is all going to lead up to the news and the hype surrounding the game so there we go, what do you think about that? Is it right that Daisy is taking this long and it still doesn't really have as much content as possibly it could? Are you just happy you're finally getting to play it on Xbox One and see it for yourself? What do you think about the price? How much of that really should be that expensive? And launch problems in early access games. Should we definitely always give them a buy when they can't get servers up and running or when people can't connect? Do these games need more close behind alphas? Is that the bare minimum to make sure that you can actually just at least access the game, regardless of how many bugs or crashes you might have, but being able to at least load up into it? Let me know all your thoughts down below in the comment section. Make sure you come join my Discord, and I'll see you, Ratbags, for another access show very soon.